Thank you very much, the FCT Khan Choir. Your Excellencies and distinguished congregants, before I ask you to take your seat, I would like us to acknowledge the fact that the service we are holding today is a service marking the seventh consecutive transition of democratic power. And so, unlike the military that give gun salute, I'm going to implore each one of us to please make seven hallelujahs at the count of now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please, please make the next four very loud. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the final one. Don't let the hallelujah of your neighbor be louder than yours. Praise the Lord. Thank you, your excellencies and congregants. You may have your seat. Before I call for the opening prayer, it's important once again to know the reason why we are gathered here. In recognition of the fact that this must be an inclusive service because our nation, based on the, on the theme, is better when we are together. The reason of our gathering is going to be read by one of the special classes of people in our nation. Some people call them disabled people, but rather they are people with several abilities. Please let's welcome to read the reason why we are gathered, Mary Musa. Please put your hands together for the Lord. You can make it a bit louder, thank you. Good morning, 2023 Presidential Inauguration Interdenominational Church Service. The Interdenominational Church Service Subcommittee is part of the for organizing an interdenominational church service to mark presidential transitions in Nigeria. This has been the tradition over the years. The purpose of this service is to bring together is to bring together various Christian denominations from various different societies to invoke blessings, offer prayers, and seek divine guardians for the newly elected president and the nation as a whole. The presidential, oh, I'm sorry. The significance of this gathering is to highlight religious freedom, inclusivity, and unity in Nigeria's diverse society. The subcommittee comprises representatives from diverse Christian denominations who are committed to upholding who are committed to upholding collective responsibility, celebrating diversity, and promoting unity among nations, religious communities. Our vision is to create a service that inspires hope, encourages interfaith dialogue, and emphasizes the values of peace, justice, and compassion. 
to promote dialogue and understanding among different Christian denominations and other faiths. Representatives from SAME have been invited to participate in the service. This inclusive approach highlights the pluralistic nature of the Nigerian society and underscores the importance of interfaith cooperation in national affairs. Key messages of unity, reconciliation, and national progress are incorporated into the service through relevant scriptural readings. The subcommittee works in close conjunction with the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, to engage a diverse mus musical ensemble that will provide inspirational and uplifting ministrations during the service. These ministrations will represent various Christian genres and traditions celebrating the richness of Nigeria's cultural heritage and evoking a sense of purpose that transcends religious and cultural boundaries. Moments of prayers and reflections are an integral part of the service, allowing attendees, including the president-elect, political leaders, and the public to have sober reflections and seek spiritual guidance, offer blessings, and express aspirations for the nation and her leaders. The subcommittee nominational church service can serve as a unifying force during times of transition, promoting reconciliation, healing, and fostering a sense of shared identity and values. Prayers during the service will be inclusive, respecting the diversity of the congregation and acknowledging our challenges and hopes as a nation. By promoting interdenominational and interfaith dialogue, shared values, and inclusivity, the subcommittee believes that the interdenominational church service contributes vitally to a smooth transition, advancing the collective purpose and national renewal. It is my prayers that during these times of transition, we will indeed have a Holy Spirit field and nationhood inspiring service. Thank you and God bless. Please may we put once again our hands together for those special class of people in our country with special abilities. It is my special privilege to call to lead us in the opening prayer, the Assistant General Overseer to Pastor Deboe uh, at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Ezekiel Odeyemi to take the opening prayer. Please, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we rise as we pray together? As we have been told, this is the seventh uh, inauguration service and seven stands for perfection. I want us to raise up our hands to God and give him glory and appreciate him because we must not take him for granted for helping us for, to be here today for this seventh inauguration service. Just go ahead and thank him. Just say a word of thank you to God for what he has done for us as a country, as a nation, as a people. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We bless your name and we worship you. Lord, we thank you and we honor you today for all that you have done for us as a people. Your word says, Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. You have been so good to us 
as a country. Lord, we thank you for standing by us. We thank you for your peace in our time. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your glory. We thank you, Lord, that we could gather here to have this service, uh, not virtually, but we have this service together in peace. We appreciate you, Lord God of heaven, for all that you have done. Accept our thanks and praises in the name of Jesus. Especially, we invite your presence on this service. We ask that, Lord God of heaven, you will glorify your name in this service in the name of Jesus. And we pray for the incoming government that, Lord, you will grant them the wisdom, the grace, the ability to lead this nation in unity in the name of the Lord Jesus. We ask, O oh God, your plans and your purposes for Nigeria, a nation that carries that unique destiny, that plan and purpose shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this service. Thank you for everyone that will officiate during this service. Thank you for what you will do. Thank you for what you will continue to do. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. God bless you. While we remain standing, we'll take the congregational aim. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. The choir will lead us. Thank you.
Hello. What a glorious day. What a wonderful season. Wow, the hand of the Lord is upon Nigeria. Before I invite our brother who will take the next aspect of this program, I want you to just join me in singing this song because today and this season is the lost season. Where loba wa she where loba Learn it if you cannot sing it. Where loba where loba wa she o ta yero It's a multi-ethnic service. It's a multi-religious service. We have an imam in our midst, for, 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 for your information. Imam Fuad Adeyemi is here to join in this celebration. Reading of that song, for those of you who do not understand the greatest language in the whole universe, it means God has done it with ease. What people think is difficult to achieve, God has done it. Has God not done it? Hello, has God not done it? Sing it for the last time. The next time, in a, it's our tradition here to distribute, to allocate items to spread across the five arms of government. So the first person among those five arms that will participate in this worship is the one representing the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We have in our midst, and you will also join me to bring to the podium the Uncommon Transformer. When he was the governor of Akwa Ibom State, everybody knows him to be that. And today he is the Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Let me humbly invite Senator Goswil Apabio to take the first reading. Thank you. Please, you can do more. Please put your hands together as we welcome. He's also a pastor. He's a child of God. Scripture reading is from Psalms 133, we read from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 133, we read from verse 1 to 3. Behold, 
good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garment. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessings, life forever. This is the word of the Lord. As we remain seated, we will have a special rendition from one of our churches, very formidable choir, whom God has been using severally. Praise the Lord. We are going to have, we have a choir that represents the church in FCT, which is Khan Mass Choir. We will invite them to refresh us, inspire us with their songs. Thank you very much.
our next Bible reading will be taken from Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 to 6 and this reading will be taken by Mrs. Salamatu Bajabia Mila. Please put your hands together as we we'll welcome her to the lectern to take this reading. The second reading is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. This is the word of the Lord. Please put your hands together to encourage her to our seats. God bless you. The next special rendition is going to come from New Life for All Choir. It's a mass choir from the Tekan Equa block of one of the blocks of Cannes. And they are coming with a very special Nigerian content to worship and to praise. I here invite New Life for All. Please step forward and render your peace. Bye-bye. 
pleasure to invite another special artist, a guest artist in the person of Ebuka Emmanuel, otherwise known as Ebuka Songs. He will give us a special rendition in a maximum of five minutes. Ebuka, your time starts now.
Somebody shout hallelujah. If you are happy for this season, shout hallelujah. Let me remind us that today we commemorate the birth of the Church of Jesus Christ. Today is Pentecost Sunday. And it is not by accident that it coincides with what we are celebrating today and tomorrow. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you believe that Jesus will reign forever in Nigeria, shout hallelujah. There is joy of the Lord in my heart. Today, we have someone very special that God has prepared to speak to us today. This man of God that I'm about to introduce to you is one of the few ministers of God that brought the Church of God to Abuja. Praise the Lord. When I was moved from my church in Lagos, Buja in 1993, I met him here. He's one of the fathers of the land. By the grace of God, he is the head and founder, the general overseer of Dominion International Ministry. And to I think it will get to a point, you know, in our type of church, in my church, when songs, when beautiful songs are, are, are hung, big men find it difficult to dance. And as we are celebrating, I was looking around and see whether big men in this auditorium will dance today. There is season for us to dance. And when it is time, you will still dance. And Jesus is our joy in Jesus' name. So to usher in the GO, General Overseer of Dominion Chapel International, are women, Dominion, women of influence. Are you with influence? Are you okay. So the proceed. I'm inviting Archbishop John Brace Daniel of Dominion Chapel with the women influence uh, Dominion Amen. women of influence of Amen. Dominion International Chapel. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Dominion Women of Influence, please quickly. While we prepare our hearts to receive the word. His hands are not short that he cannot reach to you. His eyes are never blind. He cannot see your teeth. His ears are no deaf. Cannot you cry? Your tomorrow was greater. Your tomorrow must be greater than today. No matter, no matter what I face, no matter what I see, no matter what comes my way, no matter how I cry. What did I know? What did I know? 
Somebody shout hallelujah. It's a prophecy that your tomorrow will be greater than your today. Even for us as a nation, every day is a plus and things must get better every day. Amen. I'm sure my message should be out now that everyone should have a copy so you can feel follow as I read the homily. Your Excellency, the President-elect of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Senator Bola Amit Tinubu, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, the wife of the president-elect, our dear sister, Senator Pastor Remy Bola Tinubu, here seated. Our former head of state, General Yakubu Gawan, and his dear wife. Members of the National Assembly, here present. 
the outgoing energetic and diligent secretary to the government of the Federation, Barrister Boss Mustafa, Honorable Ministers, Permanent Secretaries, Directors, General, and Chief Executives of the Government Agencies, esteemed clergy here present, and especially our eminent and um, Khan President, eminent Khan President, uh, His Grace Archbishop Oko, with whose permission I'm having the privilege to share. Thank you, Your Eminence. I know that clergy is here, head of the nominations and the Christian Association of Nigeria Executive Council. citizens of our great nation, patriotic citizens of our great nation, and members of the fourth realm of the estate, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you are all welcome to this epoch-making event, marking yet another glowing milestone in the democratic odyssey of our dear nation, indeed, I and mean, of our dear nation. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice, we're going to be glad in it. Permit me to please introduce one or two few of my friends that travel all the way across the waters just to be in this inauguration service and all the activities lined up for this weekend, all the way from Arizona, Bishop Minta. Eric, please stand and just wave to the Lord. God bless you. Please clap for him. All the way from North Carolina, I have Bishop and Prophetess Belton Platt. Please stand and give a wave to the Lord. We have also Dr. Kelly, he's our own, but based also in North Carolina. I have one of my precious sons that came in from Ghana just for this, Prophet Prakash is an Indian Ghanaian. Please stand, where are you? All right, please wave, God bless you, thank you. Many of them paid their way and flew in just to be with us in this service. As President Buhari leaves office, we acknowledge the strides made under his watch. We appreciate his dedication to the cause of Nigeria. And we are inspired by his unwavering belief in the potentials of our great nation. I thank him for his years of service and for his leadership. We wish you well, sir, in your retirement. As we stand on the principles, I mean principles of a new dawn in Nigeria, we acknowledge the providential guidance that has enabled our leaders to steer up the ship of governance to birth at this crucial time. We set our eyes on the horizon, yearning for a renewed hope and a refreshing mix of dedicated leadership and nationalistic citizenry to reposition Nigeria on the path of sustainable growth and development. As Mr. President-elect prepares to assume the mantle of leadership of Africans' most vulnerable, formidable nation, we turn to the wisdom of the scriptures to find a path forward. I invite you to consider the counsel of Peter in 1 Peter chapter number 1, verse 3. And that of Prophet Joel, in Joel chapter 2, verse 21 to 27. And that of Father Abraham, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. These passages speak of renewal, restoration, hope, and blessings in times of adversity. Today, 
as we mark the auspicious advent of our new president elect, I would like to pronounce words of hope and blessing to all Nigerians and to emphatically assure every Nigerian that God has not forgotten you. He knows our struggles and he knows your potentials. He will provide for your needs, give you strength and courage, as well as bless you with his divine abundance and all ramifications. I must also say that your manifest commitment to the future of this great nation is delightfully inspiring. God bless you all. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter number 1 and verse 3, Blessed be the Lord and God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth to a living hope. And these words remind us that we serve God, who is still in the business of creating new beginnings, bringing life where there is death, providing hope where there is despair, and giving courage where there is fear. Our great nation, Nigeria, is currently wrestling with serious challenges. Our economy is strained, and our security is threatened. Many of our citizens are living in fear and uncertainty. But we are reminded today that God is a God of renewal and restoration. He is a God who can bring forth a new Nigeria from the ashes of the old. In Nigeria where prosperity and peace are the norm not the exception. Please in the program sheet, I mean the message is not up to the uh, altar here. Can you please bring to the man of God here on the altar? Prophet Joel in chapter number two. Also provides us with inspiration. Do not be afraid, O land of Judah. Be glad and rejoice. For surely the Lord has done great things. You will have plenty to eat until you are full. And you will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked wonders for you. And never again will my people be ashamed in Nigeria. Let me hear better. Amen. In the face of adversity, the prophet's message is clear. Fear not. For the Lord has done great things, and he will continue to do so. It is disturbing that our nation, once a land flowing with milk and honey, has over the years become a place of scarcity, insecurity, and all that we have. But the promise of the Lord is that our land will once again overflow with abundance, and shame and fear that have gripped us will be no more. Oh, let me hear a big, big amen. amen. My beloved compatriots, as we usher in this new administration, let us be filled with a renewed hope. Let us not allow the current predicaments to blind us to the promises of God for our nation. We are a people of resilience and strength. Our diversity is our strength, not a weakness. Our rich cultures and traditions, our youthful energy and resourcefulness are the tools we will use to build an Nigeria of our dreams. This is a time of renewal and restoration. It is a time for us to come together 
as one people to put aside our differences and work for the common good. It is time for us to look to the future with hope and optimism, confident in the knowledge that our God is with us and will never forsake us. Somebody shout, he will never forsake us. We must be together and we are better together. Like that Psalms 133, where the brethren dwell together in unity, he commands the blessing. Let us pray for our new president and his team that they may have the wisdom and the courage to lead us through this challenging time in Nigeria, that we may emerge from these trials stronger and more united than ever before. In the words of the prophet Joel, I will repay you for the years that the locusts have eaten. You will have plenty to eat until you are full and you will praise the name of the Lord your God. Somebody shout Amen. Who has worked wonders for you? Our years of suffering will be replaced with years of plenty. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we shall praise the name of the Lord for his wonderful works. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to join in with me live of Mesopotamia. I mean, Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. A work that would alter the course of history. He revealed his intent and purpose to these ordinary men with extraordinary faith. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. And you shall be a blessing to the world. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This was not a whimsical tale spawned by a tribal con conjurer to awe and amaze a small obscure group of desolate corner of the world. This was the creator of the universe initiating an intricate process of nation building. A divine blueprint that will have global implications with eternal significance. In our own political sphere today, it is all too common to witness a dichotomy between what a politician says and what they do. Promises are made with great fear and fear only to evaporate like morning mist in the face of reality. But the God of Abraham, the God we serve, is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said it, and shall he not make it come to pass? He has promised to bless all nations, and he will fulfill his promises. Just as he did for Abraham, Nigeria, our beloved country, will not be left out of this blessing in the name of Jesus. Because God himself is the one blessing this country. Hence, our incoming president must consider one of the critical factors in restoring our nation to prosperity by harnessing the energy, the creativity, and the potentials of our youths. 
a significant segment of our population. It's below the age of 25. Our young people represent our future. And they are eager for opportunities to build that future. It is my earnest prayer that the specters of terrorism, banditry, kidnapping, and violence that have grippingly cast a pearl over our land will soon become an echoes of the past. An echoes of the forgotten past. In Jesus' name. If you believe that, say a big, big amen. We implore the divine power of God to utilize the new leadership as a tool for uniting this great nation, a bulwark against nepotism, religious bigotry, and tribal sentiments. We believe that in the next, next new administration, all of that will become a thing of the past, will become a government that involves everyone and unites everyone. I believe it will not be a good thing the next on this new dispensation to have maybe the first five principal offices in the nation being occupied by one religion. No. We as a church call upon the leadership, the new leadership, especially for the number three position, for the Senate president to be taken by a Christian to balance the equation. And if you believe that, I hear you shout amen. Going further, I enjoy our incoming president to revigorate the war against corruption in all segments of our national life. In order to accomplish the much desired security, peace, and unity, which constitute the enabling factors for Nigeria or Nigerians to value, to realize their full potentials for meaningful development of the country. Indeed, our quest to development and explore, and let me take that again. Indeed, our quest to develop and explore the vast potentials of agriculture as the mainstay of the economy with enormous multiplier effect along the value chain can only be realized in a secure atmosphere devoid of banditry, terrorism, and civil unrest. May I at this juncture appeal that our incoming president should emplace measures to fulfill the numerous promises made to the good people of Nigeria during his campaign for a better it is better, I mean, for it is better not to make a promise than making and failing to keep to it. Nigerians are expectant and highly optimistic that there will be a rebirth and a total restoration of our nation. Somebody shout amen. Permit me to also emphasize the need to focus special attention on human capital development with reference to improve universal health care, delivery of robust educational system, driven by efficient information and communication technology, I mean infrastructure, to produce and sustain quality manpower needed for rapid national development. Unemployment and poverty are like systemic twins that should be tackled headlong to rekindle the citizens' hope and restore their pride in their country. Meritocracy and reward system are values that must be given the pride of place in all segments of our national life. To realize the Nigeria of our dreams, in Nigeria we are young, dynamic, and innovative citizens will contribute towards national growth. Contribute towards national growth is possible. The role of diaspora contributions in this connection cannot be overemphasized. 
The time to heal the wounds in our nation is now. One of the shortest ways of achieving this is forming an inclusive government, not minding who did or who did not vote for the incoming president. It is time to awaken the sleeping giant in us with deliberate efforts made to enthrone our accountability, transparency, justice, and the rule of law, which essentially constitute variable, veritable panacea for peaceful coexistence and sustainable growth and development, which we all yearn for as a nation. Our gross domestic product must grow exponentially while debt burdens should no longer assail our economy. We have the potential to be the true giant of Africa and a destination of choice for foreign direct investors or investment, tourism, and hosting of the world class events, hosting of world class events. And this is our ideal Nigerian dream. And by the grace of God, we shall be singing Hosanna and glory to the King of Kings. For greater things he will do in no distant time. And I believe that this government, new government will be a government of hope against every negative expectation. To those who might have had some other political and electoral preferences, which is not unusual and unexpected, may I remind them the election has come and gone, and a winner is set to be sworn in. I therefore enjoin every citizen of our great country to put issues relating to the elections behind us and come together to support the incoming government to deliver the dividends of democracy, bearing in mind that this country belongs to all of us. Let us remember that a house divided against itself cannot stand. But together, we can make a remarkable impact and leave our imprints in the sun of time. We stand at the cups of a new Nigeria, a land whose peace and tranquility will not be mere dreams, but a lived reality. We await the era where our political class will not question what Nigeria can do for them, but rather what they can do for Nigeria, as Abraham Lincoln once said. This is the season of relief, the time when Nigerians from every part of the country, particularly Kaduna, Borno, Sokoto, Niger, Zamfara, Plateau, Nasarawa, Binwe, and Nambra State, Inugu, Kebi, and Katsina State can sleep soundly, knowing that their homeland is saved and secure. Looking forward to when all our villages that have been ransacked and displaced being returned back to their ancestral homes and getting themselves involved in farming so that the food basket of the nation can once more produce enough yam and rice in Maiduguri, in Katsina, in Kano, and everywhere to satisfy the hearing of Nigerians amid the needs of our dear country. Compatriots, as we journey into a new era, the leadership of our president elect, we carry the certainty that the same God who blessed Abraham, who made him a great nation, 
is at work in our Nigeria. In Jesus' name, we step forward, not as a collection of Jews, but as a united Nigeria, ready to enhance the blessings and the opportunities that lies ahead, better together. Let us draw inspiration as I read the last part of this address. Let us draw inspiration from the wisdom of Nelson Mandela, who once said, I am fundamentally an optimist, whether that comes from nature or nurture, I cannot say. Part of being optimistic is keeping one's head pointed toward the sun, one's feet moving forward. There were many dark moments when my faith in humanity was sorely tested. But I will not and could not give myself up to despair. That way lays defeat and death. So let us keep our heads pointed towards the sun. Our feet moving forward and our hearts filled with hope. In the words of our beloved Chino Achebe, for the sun will shine on those who stand before it, shines on those who kneel under them. In the face of adversity, let us not give ourselves up to despair. Instead, let us hold fast the promises of God for in him lies our hope, our strength, and future of this great nation. In conclusion, let us heed the call of duty. Arise, all compatriots, Nigeria's call obey. Obey the call to unity and the call to a brighter future for our nation. Let us stand together, walk together, and pray together for the dawn of a new Nigeria, a nation blessed, a nation prosperous, and a nation united. God bless you all, and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure you can do better than that. Put your hands together to the glory of God for the wonderful message that the Lord has brought to us through his servants. And to follow through this wonderful message is for us to take our intercessory prayers. And that will enable us to stand and be part of the prayers we are going to um, invite different men of God representing the different blocks of Khan and different national interests, Christian interests in Nigeria. And to pray for the Nigerian nation good, for good governance, security, and healing of the land and representing the uh, Christian Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria and Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria is Bishop Jonas Katu. He will take the prayer for just two minutes. Um, to queue up behind him is A. Komodo, Reverend Dr. Dogo Gani, representing the chap chaplaincy of all the armed forces. He will stand by to take that prayer. Next to him, to represent the OAIC is a block leader himself, Baba Aladura, Israel uh, Akina Adewo. He's also coming to take the prayer to pray for peace and peaceful coexistence and better Nigeria is the representative of Tekan Equa Block, Bishop Benjamin Foduta. And finally, we'll invite His Eminence, 
Dr. Oliver Abba to represent CCN and take the prayer on the defense and unity of the church. Thank you, sir, Bishop Jonas. Praise the Lord. Shall we stand up to pray for the nation? We're praying for Nigerian nation, good governance, security, and healing of the land. Dear God in heaven, the creator of heaven and earth, you are the one that conceived in the womb of the spirit and gave birth to every nation under the heavens. No nation came into being without your will and without your power. Nigeria, especially, you allow it to have this piece of land and you put over 350 different tribes and languages greater than all tribes and languages in the nations of the world in one place. You did this knowing what you are doing. Lord God Almighty, over 100 years we have been government after government face troubles shed blood of many yet you have kept us as a nation till now we are other leaders have failed to turn the situation of bloodshed and provide security for all these tribes that live here. This next government will not fail. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will give the next president what it takes, the political will, the power, the unction to bring about the security that we earnestly desire to live as a people. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that people that have shed blood in this nation and are still living, that you will not wait the day of judgment to judge them, let their judgment come in a haste. Those who have brought so much pains to families, let pains be given to them. Those who have destroyed lives and wiped people away, wipe them out also. You said in your word, whatsoever a man sow it, that also he shall reap. Your word will come to pass in our time. We pray for peace, peace that surpass all understanding. We pray for unity, unity that brings progress. And then let the land be healed. Let the four corner wind blow from east to south, from west to north, that there be peace all over the nation during these next four years. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. As we continue in the mode of prayers, we're going to pray for the president, the vice president, the president elect, the vice president elect, and the executives. Shall we bow ahead in prayers? Our gracious and eternal Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one and only true God, 
who sees and knows and understands all things. Before you, your children have gathered, even as a nation, to call upon your name this day, a very unique day that you've set aside for this nation to experience another greatness in another dimension. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our president, President Muhammad Buhari, and the vice president, Vice President Oshubanjo, Ancient of days, we thank you for their lives and the life of their families. We thank you for bringing them to the affairs of this country, even in the past eight years. Lord, we thank you for sustaining them. We thank you for keeping them. Thank you for preserving them. Thank you for those far you have guided them. Heavenly Father, we thank you for using them, even at this difficult moment in the history of our nation. We ask, Lord, that you uphold them. Even as they are the verge of their exit, we plead, Lord, that you that have started with them, you end with them well. And cause them to continue to find grace in you. Where they have done well, Lord, to strengthen them. Even in their failures and their limitations, Lord, we ask for your mercy. Father, we say thank you for what you have done. Keep them strong and healthy. For the incoming president-elect and vice president-elect, Ashwad Bola Tinubu and Shetima. Father, we lift them before you. They are human full of limitations. Behold them with your eyes of mercy. Prepare and equip them even for the work that is ahead of them. Release your grace upon their lives. We pray for wisdom. We pray for sound health. We pray for guidance and direction and the courage to do that which will bring growth and peace and unity of this nation. Father, we ask that you guide and direct their path and the covenant that they will be establishing. Lord, cause them to choose men and women after your heart that will work for the sake of this nation. Father, we say thank you. Bless them and bless their families and continue to uphold them. Thank you because you have chosen them. Your word says you have chosen diaries as instrument in your hands. So you have chosen and we look forward to see you and you alone even as a church in this nation. Blessed be your name, Lord. Unto you, Lord, we commit them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And amen. Let us pray. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. I therefore pray for the legislative arm of the government, the judiciary, and all the civil servants to join hands with the executive to bring about the expected new Nigeria in the name of Jesus. For these arms of government and all the civil servants in the country to create, recreate a Nigeria we are the Japa syndrome. We no longer be fashionable in the name of Jesus. To create a Nigeria, we are strikes in our tertiary institutions. We be something of the past. And we are students can have access to education loan in the name of Jesus. To create a Nigeria, we are our currency. We be stronger than the strongest currencies in the world in the name of Jesus. To create a Nigeria, we are citizens, we be proud of their, their, their beloved country in the name of Jesus. To create a new Nigeria, where we no longer travel abroad for medical reasons, except for research purposes in the name of Jesus. To join us together to create a new Nigeria, we are our international passports, we be greatly respected all over the world in the name of Jesus. And to create a new Nigeria, where we no longer be described as a developing nation, but to be described as a developed nation in the name of God the Father, name of God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, I pray. We are still in the session of prayers. We are going to pray for peaceful coexistence and better Nigeria, and as well for families. 
Dear God, we thank you for Nigeria. We know it is not by accident that we are Nigerians and also being placed in part of this world. Father, at this transition service, we commit our nation into our hands that we will live in peaceful coexistence as one body and one people. Help us to build this nation. We pray for the unity that will continue to hold us together as one people, as one nation. Help us to tolerate each other despite our differences in ethnicity. Father, we thank you for what you have done in the past and we knew you will continue to keep us together as one people in the name of Jesus. We cannot have a better Nigeria when we are not at peace with each other. A divided people cannot exist in peace. Therefore, God, unite us in our differences. We pray for peace on our nation, Nigeria, in the name of Jesus. Bless our families for better nation in the name of Jesus. Bless us, O oh God, as we commit this nation into your hands in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for the defense and unity of Christians in Nigeria. Our Lord and our God, the ancient of days, the giver of life. We call upon you on this faithful day because we know that you, our God, is our sufficiency, our protector, and our guide, and even our shield in the face of threat. Just like you said in Psalm 127, verse 1, that except the Lord watch over a city, if not, whatever the laborer do, he does it in vain. Today, with one spirit and mind and faith, we bring Nigerian Christian society onto your able hands. Father, arise and shine. Guide and guard us from the threat of life, for this unwanted destruction of Christians and their property. Lord, I know that, yes, we were able to lead the Israelites of old from Egypt to the Promised Land. Nigeria is watching. Christians are watching and waiting that you lead us from one level of greatness to the other, especially to put an end to incessant killing of Christians in Nigeria and even in diaspora in Jesus' name. Lord, you are our own. We look unto you. Bring peace to all of us Christians so that we'll be able to gather together and worship you in spirit and in truth in Jesus' name. We also want to, I want to pray on behalf of all Christians, taking all Christians before this throne of grace, O oh Lord, that you, our God, unity and diversity is expected. For us, as people of common faith, help us to understand one another, love one another, care for one another, and be able to deliver gospel to the uttermost part of the earth. It is you who do this for us. And so I ask and pray on behalf of my people, Christian leaders and other Christians themselves, that you envelop us with your presence, that your presence will guide and guide us, for us to be able to channel all our understanding and that our worship life will have a human face, that we all, in humility, and patience and tolerance serve you. Thank you, Father, because you have promised us when we ask in faith, you answer us. As you stated in John chapter 17, 
from verses 21 to 22, you did say to the Father that all may be one, just as I and you are one. We cry out this morning for all Christians in Nigeria to be united. And it is you alone that can do this for us. So we lean on you for this sufficiency. We lean on you to let self go out of us so that we can see one another with the eyes of you, Christ, so that what you have given to us before you left the world physically may be returned because you have assured us that if we believe in you and walk in you, we will do greater things than what you have done. And so help us to be able to understand this and live up to expectation so that as leaders in our church or churches, we will be able to take our members to the promised land. Just that you said in John chapter 14, verse 3b, it says, so that wherever I am, you may be here also. Help us to take our people in unity to you on the last day, so that wherever you are, we may be in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Our Lord is good. And all the time, you may be seated. Offering time. I cannot hear you. Offering time. Before I bring the one that will lead the offering, there will be a firework today at 12 midnight between the National Mocks and Christian, National Christian Center. We encourage you all to come to usher in May 29 to lead us in the offering as we prepare is Reverend Dr. Uzuako Williams, and that is the Assistant General Secretary for Christian Association of Nigeria. The first time that we have a lady as the Assistant General Secretary. Can you encourage her? Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's time for us to give our offering. I want to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I will read verse 6 and 7. But this I say to you, whosoever soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. And whoever soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Everyone according as he or she has proposed in his or her heart. So let them give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Can you tell your neighbor, God loveth a cheerful giver? Please cheerfully let's rise as we dedicate our offering. Please let's rise as we pray for our offering. Dear Lord, we thank you for this moment. Of we thank you for this opportunity to bring our offerings before you. It is indeed a privilege. We are bringing this offering to you who has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. You have given us most especially your only begotten son, Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. He or she has proposed in his or her heart. So let them give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Can you tell your neighbor, God loveth a cheerful giver? Please cheerfully let's rise as we dedicate our offering. Please, let's rise as we pray for our offering.
Dear Lord, we thank you for this moment of giving. We thank you for this opportunity to bring our offerings before you. It is indeed a privilege. We are bringing this offering to you who has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. You have given us most especially your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, for the remission of our sins. Father, as we come bearing our seed and our offerings this afternoon, we ask that you bless the offerings of our hands in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that you open the windows of heaven and shower us with your blessing as we dedicate this offering for the propagation of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ here on earth. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. I invite our brother Ebuka to lead us as we take our offerings. Now, kindly listen to the directive of the ushers. They will direct you. You are coming from the back. I go back through the high. They will direct how you are going to do it. And the offering bags are already in front. Solomon Lange, there we go. I see a new Nigeria. I see a new Nigeria. I see a new Nigeria. It's coming forth from the hand of the Lord. I see a new Nigeria. I see a new Nigeria. coming forth from the hand of the Lord. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust, but we trust, but we trust, but we trust in the name.
praise the Lord. We are now going to, please let us have our seats. We have done well by giving to the Lord. Let me now invite Barrister Daramola, the outgoing General Secretary of Christian Association of Nigeria, to say the few announcements we have. Thank you. Your Excellencies, the camp president, director of public buildings that have contributed immensely to the beautification of this place. Please, our hands together for them. And we want to thank especially His Eminence, who, are, who made sure this organ you are seeing here, for many years, have never sounded. But today, it sounded very nice. And I have the honor and privilege to invite to my side here my successor. I'm rotating out of the office as the current executives in federal government is rotating. As they are rotating out, I'm rotating out of current uh, services as the General Secretary of Christian Association of Nigeria. But government and administration never have a vacuum. I have a successor, someone that is going to be greater than myself, someone that is going to work much more assiduously than myself and achieve higher heights than myself. In person of professor, he's a professor, I'm just an ordinary barrister. He's a professor and uh, his name is Professor Samson Adetuji Fatoku. Can you please come around? I present you to the whole world. And uh, his wife is around here, yeah? Dickiness Fatoku. Dickiness Fatoku is not assisting him as general secretary, no. But it's his wife who must be recognized. He's been led by the uh, women leader, the chairperson of Gowika, Dickiness Bola Hiswalo. Thank you very much. We are welcome. We welcome you. I will do a symbolic handing over here to you. Where I was sitting, I will leave the place to take the place in the city. As I'm going there, you go and take my position there. God bless you. Thank you very much. Please let us put our hands together for the Lord. Barrister Daramola's tenure ends on the 1st of May. So by 1st of June, the new General Secretary will work with the new President of Nigeria. What a coincidence. It is very, very amazing that even with the timing of this service, you know ordinarily churches start at 10 o'clock every Sunday. When the SGF fixed the Christian Thanksgiving service for 10 a.m., us were apprehensive. We were skeptical of how this church auditorium will be filled with this beautiful congregation. I was the first chaplain of this church, this national church. And I will tell you, in the six years of my own tenure, I have not seen an amazing crowd like this. Somebody shout hallelujah. This is an attestation that there is joy in the land. Nigerians are happy. Many of us have decided to leave our natural place of worship to come and celebrate God of Nigeria today. Somebody shout hallelujah. In that wise, it is the time for us to invite Afeniferi in law. 
is our in-law. He married from us. No wonder um, our father, Sultan of Sokoto, said that this is the first and the best SGF Nigeria ever had in person of our brother, a Christian at heart, a man who did not allow position to mean anything to him, even while in office. May you please join your hands together as you welcome Brother, Pastor, Barrister, Boss, Mustafa to give us the vote of pass. Please jam your hands together. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Osibajo, SAN, GCON, and your amiable wife, the former Head of State, General Yakubu Gawan, and your dear wife. Your Excellency, Senator Oluremi Bola Ahmed Tinibu, the wife of the President-elect of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the wife of the Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, members of the National Assembly, members of the Federal Executive Council, and the head of the civil service of the Federation, the CDS, and all service chiefs and representatives of the Inspector General of Police and other security agencies, your excellencies, members of the diplomatic corps, our royal fathers here present, and on the altar, the President of the Christian Association of Nigeria and all other religious leaders, including our guest minister for today, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen of the press. As we bring this historic inauguration interdenominational church service to a close, my capacity as the Secretary to the Government of the Federation and Chairman of the Presidential Transition Council, I am honored to express my profound gratitude and to deliver to you all a heartfelt thought of thanks. First and foremost, I extend my deepest appreciation to the leadership of the Christian Association of Nigeria other religious leaders and congregants who have gathered here today, your presence and active participation in fostering interdenominational harmony serve as a beacon of inspiration for us all. Together, we have demonstrated the power of unity and strength within our shared faith. I would also like to express my sincere gratitude to the diligent members of the organizing committee who worked tirelessly and our volunteers and our sung heroes working behind the scenes. Your unwavering dedication and meticulous efforts have contributed to the resounding success of this interdenominational church service. It is through your selfless commitment that we have been able to create a scared space for collective worship and reflection today. I am immensely grateful to our esteemed guest minister, Archbishop Daniel Price, whose powerful and inspiring message has deeply touched our hearts. Your words reminded us of the core values that bind us as a nation love, peace, and harmony. In addition, 
I extend my heartfelt appreciation to the immensely talented artists and enthusiastic school children who have graced us with their presence and captivating performances. Their melodious voices and sound stirring performances have elevated our spiritual experience, instilling a sense of awe and reverence within us all. I also want to acknowledge and express my sincere gratitude to our remarkable women groups who year in and year out have been very actively participating in all our services. Your unwavering commitment to promoting unity, equality and empowerment is truly commendable. Your presence today has served as a powerful reminder of our immeasurable contributions that the women folk make to our society. To our youth, I commend your efforts and your enthusiastic participation in all our activities. To all the distinguished guests, particularly the members of the Diplomatic Corps, who have attended our services year in, year out, you have demonstrated your unwavering commitment to building a society that embraces diversity and respects the belief of others. Your support is invaluable in our collective journey towards a more inclusive and prosperous nation. The support extended by the Federal Capital Territory Administration in massively renovating the National Christian Center, as well as the National Mosque, has provided us with a scarce space